it's alert song. There we go. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. It is Friday. Uh, it is Good Friday today for those that uh, practice the Christian faith. Um, but good morning. This is Carol So, aka Naughty Boss, live with you. Sister, say good morning, everyone. This is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0, with kind of a kooky bad hair day, but whatever. We show up um, how we are, and I'm okay with that because you know what? I'm just being me. That is right. <clears throat> and just being you is to be celebrated. So that's my, where I'm at right now. Um, because Friday is the day that we celebrate our wins. We celebrate, you know, maybe we had to renegotiate, renavigate. Maybe we had a lot of detours, you know, in our journey. But there are always good things. And I apologize, my voice is really hoarse today. I think the allergies are getting to me or something. Very hoarse. But anywho, so if I sound really, I don't know, a lot of people say when you have a um, kind of a, a voice that's scratchy like that, it's supposed to be sexy. I don't know. I don't think so. But anyways, you know, today's a day to celebrate, even though we're trying to think, like, what do we accomplish? You'd be surprised, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, let's face it. Um, a lot of things happened this week, um, not only personally, but, you know, going on in the world. We all know that. Um, <laughs> and what what I felt this morning, you know, it, I don't wake up. And I've always said this, you know, I have a hard time waking up when I wake up. I'm just like, Ugh, you know, have to get my chate together for a few minutes. And then I thought about it that are you frozen i think she's frozen whatever yeah i am frozen can you still hear me i can now i can hear you you were frozen and before i couldn't hear anything but now i can hear you okay um <laughs> so i was talking about mindset and right. you know as sometimes as you have those you know monumental type of things that come through your mind and I'm like wait a minute I get to choose and and for me that just felt so liberating and I know that sounds simple but then I thought about it it's simple but it's very significant because I am always just being me as my older siblings always tease me about, oh, you're just being Janice. Um, and, and I take that to heart and it's okay, but you know what? And that's why I came up <laughs> with today's tagline, Fantabulous Mindset, Fantabulous Mindset Friday, because it all starts from the moment we wake up. Absolutely. And actually, I just posted about that. Like, if you, you got to wake up with intention, right? You have to uh, be open. I always say be open to learn something. Because if you shut that piece off, like, I know everything, or, you know, I'm at this age, I don't need to learn anymore. You really do a disservice to yourself. Um, get to know people. You know, I was on a text this morning. And uh, we're talking about one subject and I, you know, a thought came to my mind and I happened to find out that one, uh, one person that we're directly working with has another you know, whole role, another profession, which I never knew anything about. So you always got to, you always got to be open to learning things and never shut down that part of your mind that craves to learn. Uh, in addition to waking up with good intentions um, being helpful to people, uh, as well as being kind and showing patience. But that all that combined with what you're passionate about, it's a winner. And when you have that mindset to think of those things for today, you know, today will be your best day ever. And then until you start again tomorrow. So you always have to go in with that happy mindset clear concise with intention that you're going to impact someone that you're going to add value you're going to learn something you're going to help somebody and with all that that creates that whole kindness and gratitude feeling which should be in your heart seven days a week 
365 days out of the year. I mean, it really should be. It really should be. And, you know, it occurred to me um, all this week as, you know, things were happening that, and we've always talked about it, for every action, there's a reaction. Well, sometimes that role is reverse. And if I react to something, I always try to pause myself. Like, is this going to, is this worth my time? Um, is my point of view so important that I have to get so worked up about it that it's just not going to go anywhere? So therefore, it's not worth my energy. It's not worth my time. And I just kept asking myself those questions. And <laughs> we, you know, I, I think I speak for Carol Sue, you know, for you, of course, you know, we're all about free speech. And I stand by, I stand by that. But for, again, it goes back to for every action or for every reaction, how, are, how is the action part going to affect me? Is it good for my overall wellness? Is it good for my mindset? Um, in most cases, it's not. Well, and I think too is, uh, as people are passionate about different subject matters, <clears throat> it's natural to want to uh, participate and get involved with the conversation. But I like the whole point that you said pause. Uh, and we all are guilty of not pausing, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Uh, we, we're all guilty of that. Maybe it's because we're excited about something. Maybe it's because, you know, a thought process came in and we wanted to immediately share it, not understand that, oh, it might have already been stated uh, it, or, in, or may already may be a mute point. But because we care about what we're passionate about, you know, we chat, we talk, we converse. But the whole pause piece is essential, uh, not only for your well being, but for the well being of others in some regards. So I like the whole thing about pause. Will it add value? Um, did I do my homework? We're all guilty, you know, we all kind of collaborate and jump in a conversation. And then we realize, oops, I was wrong, or that's not so, or I didn't do my homework on that one. Um, so be accountable, but also pat yourself on the back. Hey, you know, I didn't pause. That's on me and that's okay. I'm going to learn from it. So there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. I want to make sure we're clear on that because it right. happens all the time. Right. But I, like the, I, I love the whole idea of pause. It really is essential for me. Um, and again, as you said, we're all guilty of just the, you know, let's react, let's pounce. Yeah. And yeah. I'm okay with that sometimes. But the pause reflection is I think more important to me than getting my point across because if I feel that is if I am uh <laughs> excuse me not adding value if I am not adding to the conversation right. in a very productive way you know I listen I've tried you know having constructive um conversations and what I learned from that is I don't always have to put my two cents in. To me, my mindset, my pause is worth more than the two cents. Right. And I think that that piece right there is really, really hard for a lot of people for many different reasons. You know, again, going back to maybe they're really passionate about that subject matter. They want to contribute, they want to be helpful. And then they realize, ooh. I wasn't so helpful after all. That happens. We know that. We all do it. But at the same time, don't negate, like it's okay to pause, but don't think that you can never contribute because their contribution to anything, even as small as the contribution may be, may be a nugget that someone else needed to hear. or put them in, get their mind working that oh, I didn't think of it that way. Uh, <clears throat> or worst case scenario, 
hey, maybe you didn't know, but A, B, and C. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, already was stated. Or it's been done before. So you don't want to like shut the conversation down for the sake of shutting it down because you don't want to, you know, tiptoe around a certain subject. As long as you're doing it with good intention, uh, with heart, with thought, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also something to say about a pause, depending on what the subject matter is, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And, you know, for for people who who don't know, um, I have participated in a um, protest. And I was really happy that I did. It was the first protest I ever did or walk or whatever you want to call it. And. I felt empowered as a parent because I felt that my voice didn't matter. And I realized that it did matter, especially when I was asked to speak. And this was all stemmed around uh, from my son's, um, from Ryan Scott's uh, accident or whatever we want to call it. And people came up to me and thanked me for sharing my story or sharing part of Ryan's story. And I felt good. I felt like I contributed in a very constructive manner without maybe, trust me, there was a lot. I was very, um, I was afraid of going, but I just, I knew my heart, I had to go. And it was, <laughs> it was very peaceful. Um, it was very organized and, you know, I even went up to the, the troopers and everybody was there, you know, thank you for keeping not only us, but the posing viewpointers or whatever, you know, thank you for keeping us all safe. That meant a lot to me to acknowledge my feelings, but also to acknowledge um, law enforcement, and those people who put their lives on the line, because we all know things can kind of get kooky when stuff like that happens they but, can you know you know that or you're not a board meeting uh you know podcast I mean all those things anytime there's a conversation you have a, a a piece of vulnerability out there when you kind of expose yourself to the conversation you're vulnerable to either criticism uh to a difference of opinion um stepping on someone's toes Th those are all things that you're, you you make yourself vulnerable when you contribute so i think when i listen to somebody that can contributes whether i agree with what they're saying whether they're giving me some insight whether they're offering advice whether it's an fyi um i don't get I don't get, I don't put the wall down on them, even though it may be something I already knew or it was already discussed or, you know, I agree with or I don't agree with because I always try to imagine myself in the other person's shoes. And for some people to speak up, to add their own value, to contribute in the conversation, it may take a lot of them courage because they're maybe not one to speak up. Maybe they're the last ones in the group that will ask a question because for fear of not being accepted and or, you know, they don't know what the outcome is going to be. I mean, most of the time, I think for most people, it's how, how will it be received? So for those of you that do that, you know, pat yourself on the back that you participated. Um, at the end of the day, as long as you do it with good intention, that you feel you're adding value, that you feel that what you have has a purpose within that conversation. And if you're shut down or if you're dismissed or if you're, you know, like we don't, we don't gel with what you're saying, we don't agree with it, know that it's still added value. You have to go in with that confidence that somewhere some way an added value may not have been received that way but you do yourself a disservice if you don't get in the game of conversation and 
conversation doesn't have to be heated. Sometimes it does get heated. Sometimes it gets like raw and real. Like maybe you are talking about a subject that hits someone's nerve or brings back a good memory or a bad memory. But the point is to contribute to conversation because when you do, you realize the gifts and the blessings that are received within that conversation. You might learn something new. You might find out you didn't know something about someone or a subject or an opinion or a viewpoint that doesn't even gel with yours, but at least now you understand it better. So always contribute. Don't, don't feel like you gotta sit at the end of the table and be quiet. Uh, as long as it's done with courtesy and respect and with true passion and heart, with thoughtfulness, and kindness, always, always, always contribute. Yes. And, you know, I like what you said about the true passion and heart, because as these matters come up that, you know, touch a lot of nerves and rightfully so, um, it's okay to share your passion and I think for me like I had to just let go of the barrier it, you know typically you know and everybody busts my stones on this I'm a little shy by nature I know that's hard to believe <clears throat> I would say I'm the more quiet sibling but guess what I can be very boisterous when I feel I need to and share my passion and and share why I feel a certain way about something um, which kind of a, a sidebar to that, you know, talking about uh, Ryan's uh, situation, we have um, an amazing guest on next week on Tuesday, Triumph Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, Dr. Gina Locke. <laughs> um, and all I will just say is Ryan's story as we know it, as I know it, is very heartfelt, is very passionate, not only as a mom, but, you know, um, my family as well, and we, and we all have our, you know, opinions about what has transpired. And all I have to say is wait till you hear Dr. Gina Locke's story. And yeah, and I'm going to be looking forward to that with uh, Di in my hair because I'm getting a hair point. So in that segment, I might just have my picture up. That's okay. <laughs> And See, this is the good thing about what we do is obviously life still goes on. We still have appointments. We still have things we have to get done. And uh, the unique piece of a podcast is you can still contribute and just have your picture up. And they don't know what you're doing. But of course, I've already let the cat out of the bag that I will be having yeah. a hearing appointment on Tuesday. Yeah. So, and, and as another sidebar, you know, I'm working on my <coughs> my um, spring reading list. And uh, one of the people that I've had on my stories podcast, I read his book and he's already been a guest and he just redid his um, book cover. And I had written him um, a really nice uh, review, if you will. And it's about baseball. Um, and I'd love to show everyone the cover. He just redesigned it. And I think it's fantastic. But this Joe's just goes to show you that you can't judge the book by the cover, nor the subject by the cover. And which was why I was excited about mindset this morning too, because now when you think of baseball, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a big baseball fan. I'm a Red Sox fan, just probably because of the way we were brought up, you know? Um, and of course in Connecticut, you're either a Yankees fan <coughs> or a Red Sox fan. I'm a red on the Yankees. So one person, what was that? I said boo on the Yankees. I always do that though. Yeah. Everyone knows I'm a, a diehard Red Sox fan. Right. And, and I like and, the rivalry. I do love the rivalry between the Yankees yes. and the Red Sox. It's classic. Um, it can get uh, feisty, uh, but it's always in a good, I mean, yeah, they're obviously on either side. There's always the crazy fans. But it really is, you know, it's just a classic rivalry. I love it. It is. It's one of those really good rivalries. Right. And when I met this person to read his book, I was like, okay, baseball, whatever. Blew me out of the water. 
absolutely blew me out of the water. So I want to show you the, um, I'm just going to do this real quick because I know uh, we got to get things up and running here. I'll just bring this up real quick. It takes a second. So this is his revised book cover. Um, the death and resurre resurrection of baseball echoes from a distant past. Phenomenal read, just unbelievable. I was captivated. I could not put the stories down. And look what he did. He included my um, review on the back of his book cover. Awesome. How cool is that? Yeah. So I just wanted to share that and, and kudos to um, William Douglas. Um, fascinating book. Um, great read. I really, <laughs> I think from anyone from 10 years old all the way up. Well, that's cool. Well, I don't think I'm reading a different book. I'm trying to, get, it just came in. So I'm, I haven't read it yet. Hold on. I'm going to put this down over here. So I got a wrap it. Came from yesterday with all these good stuff. Ooh. And of course, everyone knows how much I love, you know, recipes and different good things. So this is How Not to Die by uh, Dr. Michael Greger. And it's all about what to eat to add years to your life. So this is an international bestseller. Discover the food scientifically proven to prevent and reverse disease. As we, we've been talking about that. So it came with the book. And then it also came with the cookbook. So I'm, I'm super excited about that. Because we talked about that. We you know, had a doc doctor on this week uh, you know, about really taking back you know, your own health and wellness journey and not automatically, you know, questioning the doctor that you go to your, your normal physician. And are there certain things that I can do to improve whatever I'm at the ailment that I'm dealing with by food? If, you know, if I change up what I eat. So I had saw this in How Not to Die. It's a big book, really big book. Um, and so actually, I, I love it when I flip open a book and it gets to something that I'm definitely going to, it's going to resonate with me. So the chapter, I just opened the book up and it automatically flipped on to chapter seven, which is how not to die from high blood pressure. <laughs> uh, and for most everyone that knows, you know, my mind's been elevated and I have been treating it with really uh, mostly with my diet. Um, so that was one of the things that I was excited about. High blood pressure, hibiscus tea can work better than the leading hypertensive, hypertensive drug and without side effects. There you go. Bing, bing, bing. We learned something new. So how cool is that? I opened it up and right to the thing that I need to know about. That looks like a great. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, right? Because I literally, as you saw, I just opened it up right out of the package. That is awesome. And you know what? You know, it just goes back to what, you know, my doctor said to me this week, in fact, uh, took me off that medication I was on. I'm only on one prescription. It's like, she's looking at it. She's like, no, I don't want you on this. You don't really need it. And just like, okay. So the little thing that I have, <laughs> the cough, um, which is related to GERD. I have GERD. Um, so I'm going to look for different alternatives, but she says, you know, don't be on she says, I'm not telling you not to take prescriptions, but what I'm saying is you don't need this. Right. And I think that's one of the subject matters we, we, we've been drilling to people is, you know, you are your own best advocate of your own body, your mindset, you know, all things that are you. You're in charge of that. And ultimately, the one that you're accountable to is the reflection in the mirror. Um, and we're not saying don't take medication. Obviously, listen to your physician. But the thing is to question you know, is there alternatives to not, you know, I may have to be on the medication for a little bit, but are there alternatives that I can do to be proactive in, in getting my health better? Mm. So uh, I'm excited to uh, read this book and look at the cookbook. And I love cookbooks anyways, you know, just different, different varieties of, you know, taking something that you absolutely love and playing around with the ingredients to make it, it have maybe a healthier version. But this particular cookbook's already done that for me, so I kind of like that. So I don't have to really think about it too much, just dive into the, to the recipe. Specifically, 
Obviously, I'm looking specifically for low sodium items and recipes uh, for me, but that would be the question of the day. I mean, we, this is a uh, good Friday, um, a somber um, holiday, if you will. And I'm not going to go into all the pieces of that. Uh, obviously, everyone knows what Good Friday means, but it is a day for, you know, a somber feeling with reflection, uh, only to lead us to the Easter Vigil and then obviously Easter Sunday. So what are you cooking this Easter? A lot of people, you know, are, are more mindful of what they're putting in their body. Um, obviously, one of the great traditions is lamb. I'm not a lamb fan, uh, but it is for a lot of pork loin, ham. All of those things are pretty high in sodium for me. So if I do decide to have a little piece of ham, it'll literally be a very, very look, because I do love ham, but it's, ham doesn't love me. Hmm. Exactly. And, you know, for Lent, I gave up, you know, sodium. And let me tell you, I'm one of those people totally guilty of it putting it on my food even before I taste it. And we, Gary and I were talking about that this morning. And I said, you know what? I thought that I would miss the sodium more than I missed that second cup of coffee. And now that I'm almost at the end of Lent, I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to give myself <laughs> one or two days during the week. If I feel, you know what? I really want that second cup of coffee. Then I might have, it. but I'm, but the sodium, I'm just going to continue not you know, except for when maybe, um, cause I do like it on my French fries, like a little bit on my French fries. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't use it a lot. If I do, I use Himalaya salt. So I don't, I don't use a lot. I try to use more natural flavors to add flavor to it without it. But I agree who doesn't like, you know, uh, last night we were at a pickleball university happy hour. And one of the things that was served was, you know, the soft pretzel with the mustard. Oh. I didn't eat it. Uh, because we, you know, you know, with those soft, big pretzels, it's got the big kosher salt on it. I'm like, even though kosher salt is a little bit better, it, it's, you know, because of the grain, it's so thick. I'm like, nope, I can't have that either. So um, I skipped on that. And I don't miss, I, like you said, I miss it a little bit here and there, but because I use just a touch of the Himalaya salt, I really don't miss, miss it that much. But it is... A weekend where you're going to have festivities. Um, obviously, we're celebrating um, the 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 you know Jesus rising from the dead uh, for all for all of us, and and that still rings true today. He rises above for us at all times. He carries the load when we can't carry it. He always has our back. And I say he, I'm sticking with he, um, but. It is a weekend of reflection to, to be with family, to be with friends. Um, a lot of us are away from, you know, the traditional being around our family. I, you know, as you go older, that happens. Relocation occurs. Uh, but make sure that you spend the time to, you know, call up your family, FaceTime them, connect with them. Um, because really family uh, and those friends that are like family are really the root of why you gather in such a way that makes it memorable that you you know years later you talk about you know talk about that funny you know that funny holiday when a b and c happened or whatever so uh from all of us from from both of us and our families we wish you uh, a great a great holiday weekend no matter what your faith is enjoy it uh be in the moment uh, obviously be mindful, you know, uh, I'm not saying don't have your favorite treats, but be mindful of it. Uh, will it serve you or will you regret it? So yeah, eat those treats, but maybe eat a smaller amount. That way you feel like you would not deprive yourself because we don't want you to do that, but we don't want to, we don't want you to demolish all your good work either. With that, this is Carol Stu, AKA Naughty Boss, live with two this does. Hey everyone, this is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. We hope you have an amazing um, weekend. Happy Easter, happy Passover, and we shall see you uh, Monday for Mindset Monday. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for Bye -bye. now.